Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to discuss why do people want to perform a memory scan? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, today's question, why do people want to perform a memory scan? This, this at least recently came up where I was talking to Jackie about it because someone had asked me on a, a question on YouTube saying, hey, can you do a series on memory scan? And I'm like, memory scan? Like, I don't, you want Alzheimer's? Like, I don't understand what, you know. So then he, he added another comment, but um, at the after our end of our podcast last week, I asked Jackie, I'm like, hey, you know, what, why would someone want to do this? And, uh, and that was where you, why don't you go ahead and Jackie, you're, you're the one that know, knew the answer straight off. Yeah, at least the answer that I went to, because I, I, it's one of the only reasons that I know of or have had a use for was in gaming situations or there might be a few others I wouldn't know, but that's at least the one I believed off the bat that it was. Because if you actually do want to, let's say, cheat at a game or want to give yourself unlimited health or something like that, one surefire way if the developers hadn't put in um, different type of bugs or cheat codes or whatever, you would still be able to achieve something similar by changing specific addresses in memory. Because where else would that information be stored? Okay. If it's visible, it's yeah. Continue, yeah, you're doing great. If it's visible on screen, the computer needs to have some kind of information to show it to you because your screen isn't the thing connected to the internet. It's actually your computer and the computer will then process whatever uh, is on your screen and the information might be on your hard drive or your RAM or in your graphics card or wherever it might be, but it's in a memory location. And by being able to scan memory, you would probably be able to find where that information was. So case in point, um, let's say you're playing Star Wars Battlefront, right? Great, great game that I play a lot in Xbox. And uh, someone shoots you and your health drops down to 50%, right? Uh, if you knew where that was stored, you could then go in and say, you know what, let's that 50, let's make that 100, right? Let's boost my health back up, right? That's what you're saying. Like, this is the quick, easy way to, to cheat. It's not, it's not cheating in air quotes because it literally is. You're reshaping the game. You are hacking at the fullest potential at that point. Yeah, you could, in essence, make any type of change you would like. Um, in recent years, because of issues like this, Gaming companies have, of course, taken measures to try and prevent stuff like this from happening. Let's say you were editing something in a Super Mario game. Uh, you were playing it locally against yourself uh, or against whatever best time you had on completing. There you would only be cheating yourself, so to speak. You would be free to do whatever you liked. But as soon as you move the scores into a ladder board or the cloud or an online server or whatever, then you begin maybe cheating other players. And that's when it becomes an issue. And therefore, more and more games today where that's how things are played, information like this is stored on the server. And you get some kind of token information on your local system so your computer can render the game and show you whatever but every time you're hit by a monster or your car drives off the road or whatever kind of game you're playing uh, that information is then verified against whatever the server knows so if you went into the game and actually changed some of these settings you could be lucky and give yourself 
trillions and trillions of gold, but the chances of that actually existing would be very slim because the server would either have some kind of verification process that I don't know, but to make sure that you don't all of a sudden get millions and millions of gold that you are not allowed to have, having, let's say, a monster, let's say it was a game where something dropped loot, that loot wouldn't drop locally on your computer. It would be rolled on the server and be told to your local version. So if you try to change the memory or whatever you got, um, that would only be locally. I, I have, a, I think, a much simpler analogy, Jackie, that you're going to mm-hmm. appreciate. Um, and I'm going to tell it in the form of a story because they're always much funner, right? Yeah. When I first started working at TI in the Internet Marketing Group, um, my job was to make the, the, the job I got much simpler and automate it. So part of that process, where I had to go to a SharePoint site and look at a page and then automate, like, building a query from what was on the page. And so this is when I was just learning dot notation and, and all this stuff. And I realized with IE, I can change the words on the browser page to whatever I want, right? Besides take actions from and stuff. So as a joke to my boss, because we're at Texas Instruments, right? So I said, look at my computer. And, and I went to ti.com, which is our homepage. And I had ADI, which is our main competitor, put in where everywhere it said TI. And, and I'm explaining to him, look, I'm doing this because it's just local, you know, it's it's on my browser. It's not on the server. I'm changing it locally just to look at it. Um, and I was explaining how I can actually take this, and when I look for this text, I can write a query based on that text and I'll have it automatically do it for me. Anyway, he got, he's like, that's really great. I got to I gotta go. I got to go talk to someone over in IT. He, he seriously thought that, like, I had somehow, you know, changed it on the servers, right? And I'm like, no, this is just local. You know, it's it's it doesn't have any effect on everyone else. It's just on now. Granted, on that on the DOM, I was affecting the DOM. It was literally what was in you know the memory there. But it was a funny, really funny example of like here. And I really liked the guy. He was a great boss. But clearly, he didn't understand anything about technology because he should have very easily understood. I'm not changing it. You know, on our website. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's one of the limitations that that exists there. And memory scan is a very powerful way of um, getting around whatever types of limitations. And uh, through the years, that has been a method used to give people all kinds of advantages in games and maybe also in other types of programs. It's been ways to figure out where license keys are stored, where to remove different types of blocking on software. And there's all kinds of things you could do by scanning the computer's uh, local memory and uh, taking action on those memory clusters. It would rarely actually change the software permanently because sure. it's uh, just in memory. Um, so that's exactly where I actually I was going to try to go next was, and it was from years ago talking to Tank about um, auto hotkey. And, and at the time, this was several years ago now, maybe like five years ago, uh, four years ago, he was saying how auto hotkey was so insecure because other programs can read. It doesn't store itself in a, in a space in memory that was protected. Um, and I, I need to go circle back with him and ask him if that's changed. But what popped in my mind overall was, hey, that everything you mentioned about the gaming thing, if you switch that to like industrial espionage, where I just want to be able to copy what you're doing and extract grab that data, so I could write a program that would run on your computer. And when you fire it up, it goes and looks and pulls out information, you know, and, and lets me have a copy of it, a local copy. I don't care if it doesn't affect your data, but that's not my goal. My goal is just to steal that data. Like, that's huge, right? So, yeah, that's – and this has nothing to do with Dada Hotkey in particular. It's just that is how people could be using uh, uh, scanning memory and what they're going to use it for, right? Yeah, it's – it's it, it, maybe people have experienced websites where they can't right-click. 
to copy an element or whatever it might be. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like peeing your pants, right? It, the site isn't truly protecting itself from people copying its content. It's removing the easiest way to copy its content. But as we know, if you actually uh, am able to access the browser's uh, developer parts, you could probably get it. But if in, even if you couldn't access that, you could most likely access the browser's working memory and extract it anyway. So as long as it's displayed on your machine locally, the information is on your machine somewhere. It might not be easy. It might not be convenient, but it is there somewhere. And I'd say very few instances disproves this. And I know with, is it Citrix or something like that, where what it does is it takes the local system over there, makes a video stream of it and shows that to you. So you don't have any kind of field or, or Windows interface or locations where the text is stored because it's all just one image. So you wouldn't be able to actually extract what that text string is because it's just a bunch of pixels in an image. But in essence, if the image can show you uh, text in a specific pattern, you could per se perceive it um, by using uh, reading memory. Yeah, well, and, and actually, I was gonna, it was actually, that's an interesting thing to bring up, Jackie, with the Citrix thing, because uh, I and I think I, I don't think we actually did a podcast on it. I think Isaiah and I did a, a just to re recorded a, a topic on it, because I had a call with Ryan Wells, and we were talking about uh, just general stuff, and also it dawned on me, like, okay, there's this stuff you and I do typically with AutoHotKey, and it's it's really an API access approach, right? Where we are programmatically doing stuff. And the things that most people, when they start with AutoHotKey, they're sending mouse clicks and keystrokes and looking for images. And that's what the whole Citrix helps, you know, force you to take that approach, right? And, which, which you and I talk about a lot. If you have to do it, you can do it, but it's much less reliable, consistent, you know, more likely to have issues, uh, this and that. But it, it was an interesting thing of like, you're right, it adds a, a great level of security of no longer do I have API access, programmatic access, where I can do a lot of the stuff in my toolkit. Um, it still doesn't stop me, right? I can use OCR in a second and show you how I can grab the text, you know, but um, yeah, it's, it's just not often what you really need. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I've worked enough with... Um, getting information off of the screen buffer or off of what you see to know that people, if, when I'm looking at my own image here, I see some of the small graphic defects that happen because of the lighting or the quality of my camera or the speed that I move or whatever it might be. But I believe that everybody sees the same thing. But in essence, the way your graphic card renders my video stream would be ever so slightly different. We don't see it because we don't have the perception to see the differences. But if you actually took, grabbed an image of, let's say, my ear here, and you did this exact same thing at exactly the same frame, and we compared them, the chance of the pixels being 100% the same would be as close to zero as you get, right? It, it, they just ain't because the movement over the internet would probably lose you some quality, the packages would be lost and your graphic cards rendering it uh, and the algorithm and the code used to actually display it would probably also make very small, subtle changes. And 
the manufacturer of your monitor or your graphic all kinds of stiff stuff actually happens that we don't see this is going to get a little off a little far off. <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Just no, 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 but I, I'm, I'm very curious because it's an actually interesting thing but like i said i've i don't understand a lot about graphic stuff but i um that last little bit the part about your monitor at first i had that thought but then i thought with a screen clipping tool if we're using that that doesn't you know that wouldn't your monitor wouldn't matter on that is my gut is that right no, it's it's my uh, wording that kind of messed it up because of course what's actually on your monitor isn't what's being clipped thank you so yeah course, what's on uh, uh, your computer but the idea of people believing that they see exactly the same thing uh, would not be the case uh, per se if you took a camera shot of the screen in the same manner with who ever knows how many megapixels or whatever um, on <laughs> still whatever just the idea of still trying to compare even the pixels of a very, very high quality camera would still give you differences because it's just how physics work. All right, let's circle back because I do think um, back to memory scanning. Uh, and, and here's the thing I think both you and I, one is I, I know I'm not qualified. I know from talking to you, you're like, yeah, I'd have to read more on it. Um, but neither of us are probably going to do a, a video on how to do it right um because it's generally speaking up to no good not always because that's what i want to bring back in you know with auto hotkey using the older windows programs that had the older control types that's where i had told tank just the other day i was talking to him I'm like you know the first time i realized that i could open like notepad and i could hide a control or move it or disable it programmatically you know affecting that i said my respect for auto hotkey just really elevated so much because I'm like, sometimes you do stuff and you don't like the program you're working with and that's okay. You know, it's your program, you know, you've paid for it and altering it instead of paying 50 grand to have someone go, you know, alter the executable, you can do something like this, right? So that's why I'd say, help me if I'm wrong here. You could use memory scan for something like this in a, in a, in a way that is legit and it's, it's not, you're not trying to hack, you're not trying to cheat or industrial espionage, um, but the odds are that's, that's generally not what's going on, right? Yeah, but again, you could use it in all types of different uh, ways, and this would be absolutely one of the ways you could use it. You could use it to grab memory, you could use it to limit memory, you could use it to read memory or write memory, You and that's what all the other functions are doing anyway. Mm. You're just getting help by either that language or that function or that part of the OS or that part of uh, whatever it might be. Um, so, so in essence, you reading, writing, or not uh, memory isn't in any way more. I wasn't going to say harmful to your computer because that's what's happening anyway. But sure, of course, you can make a process do stuff it wasn't intended to do, and that can have unexpected results. So, uh, yeah, it, it's it's something you could do if you found a good use for it. it might be whoever knows if you had one program it was never updated and it had a specific structure, you could use a small piece of code to activate every time that process started or that window came up and make sure that clicks on the close button wouldn't work just because you kept closing the program before you save, whatever it might be. Just uh, as an example, you could do very simple stuff like that. Awesome. Well, hopefully, uh, you guys, I found it a fascinating topic in, in realizing that, you know, auto hockey and other tools can look at memory, what's there, and then change. I mean, all like you said, they do this all the time, right? This isn't something new, but the point is, 
I'm going to be like a brain surgeon and go look and say, hey, you know what? This is the area of the vocabulary. Hey, here's where the dirty words are stored. I'm going to get rid of that guy swears like a sailor. I'm going to I'm going to go remove those. Right. Like that's where suddenly it's, um, you know, little it, it's fascinating, but it, it definitely usually it's not done for a good purpose. No, I, I'd say I've used very simple memory scanning tools like TG Engine or something like that. And of course, if you're just looking at a game and there is a hundred uh, life points, searching for that on your computer, a hundred, that's the only value you would know. In memory, it doesn't say uh, health in this game, a hundred. No, but you could go into that processes memory and scan for the value 100. The chance that you would find 100 more than once is astronomical. What you could then do is actually let yourself get hit by something. And now you actually have two things. You have a list of all the hundreds, and now you have 46 left. So now you would scan all of these... (laughs) You would scan all of those locations for the value of 46. Right. And you may still get a handful or more uh, that had the value of 46. And you would either heal yourself up or get hit again and do it once more until you had a single one. And then you would have scanned memory for where your health is located. At least for then, you know, like you said, people, the um, manufacturers are changing the you know the, the locations of things purposely to stop people from doing this. Yeah, new version with game, new compilation, new memory location, so forth and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, but actually, that last process it is interesting because it it's basically like troubleshooting, right? Go do something, go take a reading, come back, make some, hope, try to make something different, and look at it again, and help start isolating where it is. But yeah, it's it's boy, it's it's a lot of work for. For me, it depends on the other, the payout. Whew, that's not a big payout, but anyway. If let's say you're playing a game, you find it amazingly fun, and you just want to run through it and smash everything on your way because that's the fun part. But you keep dying. Then you go in and you set your health location to on. Uh, writable. Now you can't get hurt and you can keep on smashing for hours because that's what you think is fun. That's, that's okay in my book because games, fun. Yeah. Go for it. Right. Why are you supposed to start over millions and millions of time just because you want to have fun? When other people come into the mix, it becomes another matter. But yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, chime in on your opinions of of memory scanning, and uh, you know, should should people be taught how to do this? Should it be you know not in any way described? Did we go too far already? But what do you think? Yeah. Let, let us hear. We can do either more in depth things, or we can research better, or whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Bye.